Hello. On December 26, 2010, my sisters and I had packed up our suitcases and we were about to head to the airport to visit our father in New York City. And as I walked out the door, I realized something. I really needed to pee. So I run to the bathroom and I sit on the toilet and when I look at my underwear, I see blood and I start crying because my dramatic pre-tween seventh grade mind jumps to the conclusion that I am dying, bleeding from the inside out. So I rip off my bloodied underwear and I run into the living room with it and go to my mom and I tell her I love her. I tell my younger sisters I love them and I apologize for having to leave them at such a young age. <laughs> now before I proceed, I want you to feel or sense if anyone around you may feel uncomfortable by my conversation starting of menstruation. Because that's what I'm going to be talking about today. How the taboo around menstruation is causing a hindrance when it comes to global development. To provide an exposition to why I'm so passionate about periods, as a strong believer in storytelling, I'm going to begin by telling you one of my own. That's me in seventh grade. <laughs> in the spring of my freshman year, my mother lost her job. And within a couple weeks, we could no longer afford our apartment. We had to pack up our house. And for the next several months, my sisters and I and my mother were labeled legally homeless, couch surfing with our closest friends. And my commute to school went from being 10 minutes long to over two hours involving two bus changes. I was constantly worried. I was worried about my family's financial situation, worried about how much longer we could afford food, how much longer I'd have to lie to my friends about where I lived, how much longer I'd have to fill in that little bubble marked no permanent address on school forms. During this time, I became fascinated by other people's hardships, probably to distract myself from what was going on in my own life, but also to better understand the inequities I was starting to notice around me. Through countless hours of sitting on the bus and sitting under awnings to escape the Portland rain, I started conversing with homeless women. And I continued these conversations as I volunteered at a local morning hospitality service, washing dishes and singing and serving food. And I began to ask women, what was something that they struggled with? What was something that was going unaddressed that made them feel uncomfortable and what could I do? For the remainder of my family's time of transition, I picked up a few jobs to help support my family, but also contribute to paying for school fees. And with a portion of this money, I purchased feminine hygiene products. And at night, I would fill Ziploc bags of these tampons and pads. And in the morning, after talking to women about how they struggled with periods, I would hand them one of these care packages. And they would start to proceed to tell me stories of using stolen pillowcases and dirty socks or brown paper grocery bags that they found on the street to maintain menstrual hygiene. I basically became obsessed with this unaddressed natural need. I started calling nonprofit organizations, searching for a reason why it was going unaddressed, and found that it was often due to a lack of funds. Because when nonprofits think about what the homeless population needs, you think of food, you think of clothes, you think of toothbrushes, socks, but we don't think of tampons and pads. And so I got really angry by this. Because when you think about it, periods are so natural. Every single woman experiences it on a monthly basis for an average of 40 years, from the age of 12 to 52. So if it was so na natural, why was no one talking about it? Talking to these women who had endured more hardships than I had, could ever imagine for myself, I began to feel obligated to do something with what I had been blessed with to make a difference. I felt how blessed I was to have a supportive network of family and friends and educational opportunities. And I vowed to fully invest my time, my resources, and my work to becoming a change maker and supporting the women that I had connected with and standing up for their natural needs. When my family saved up enough money to move back into our house, I knew I had to do more. And in the spring of my sophomore year, I founded Camions of Care. Camions of Care is now a global 501c3 nonprofit that manages menstrual hygiene through advocacy, education, and service. Through the global distribution of feminine hygiene products and a nationwide network of campus chapters where we engage and develop youth leadership. In the last 11 months, our network of 1,200 volunteers has distributed over 4,000 feminine hygiene product care packages to 25 different nonprofit partners in five different states and three different countries. And our nationwide network of 15 campus chapters con continues to grow and break down the taboos around menstruation, starting conversations and helping to spread our services. Through my work as an advocate for periods, through conversations with other international leaders, I came to the conclusion that when it comes to global development, women's empowerment is the key. And the power of this statement is held in the hands of mothers. Because when it comes to developing and cultivating our next generation, 
and establishing familiar relationships, women have a lot of power. And by providing her with the resources to feel healthy and productive, we're ensuring that half the population is contributing to the society economically and psychologically. Empowering a woman doesn't just have an effect on her, but has a catalytic effect on families and communities. So where do we start? The answer is education. A basic education can delay child marriage and child, la child labor and child birth. It can prevent girls from contracting diseases like HIV and AIDS. And according to UNICEF, signifies a 25% wage increase later in life. But I'm not talking about education today. I'm talking about periods. Because before we can know that women and girls are stepping forward and taking full advantage of educational opportunities and knowing that they have the confidence to reach their full potential, we need to make sure that their natural needs are addressed. According to Femme International, periods are the number one reason why girls miss school in developing countries. In Kenya, the average girl misses 4.9 days of school each month because of her period. In India, 70% of diseases are caused by poor menstrual hygiene, often leading to maternal mortality. And a general lack of education surrounding the importance of maintaining menstrual hygiene or the general lack of education around how to use products can cause negative side effects ranging from skin irritation to something more fatal like toxic, toxic shock syndrome. Often girls can feel overly self-conscious and uncomfortable as they experience menstrual cramps for the first time, uh, are nervous about new bodily odors, or scared about PMS where your hormones are raging and you have new chocolate cravings in the middle of the night for no reason. What can be most scary is what a period symbolizes in some cultures, leaving behind childhood and entering womanhood being ready to be a mother and taking on more cultural responsibilities. The taboo, universally, is often what causes girls to feel weaker, to feel ashamed, and to feel less confident when they're on their periods. Before I came to this understanding of how natural periods were, I myself used it as an excuse. From December 26, 2010, when I got my first period, for the next two years, the remainder of my middle school career, I, along with seven other girlfriends of mine, did not participate in a single PE class because every day we told our gym teacher that we were on our periods, so therefore we can no longer participate in dodgeball. I tell this story for two reasons. First, because my male gym teacher represents the population that is scared to talk about periods. He never once questioned if all eight of us were on our periods at the same time for the entire two years. <laughs> and I tell it because I, along with my friends, represent the girls who accept the idea that it makes us weaker, that it makes us less capable, that it makes us unable to participate in dodgeball. <laughs> so, so this taboo and uncomfortableness around the topic of periods starts at a really young age, specifically around fifth grade when health class comes around. I began calling up teachers from around the US and found that Elementary school health classes usually work started by co-ed classes, the boys and girls in one room, and they talk about nutrition, the importance of sleep, and they talk about why it's important to remain, um, maintain family relationships, but then they split up, the boys in one classroom and the girls in another classroom. The boys talk about condoms, the introduction to sex, what they need to expect with their voice dropping through puberty, and the girls are introduced to the topic of menstruation. The teacher may hold up a tampon and a pad and tell them what it is and how to use it. But meanwhile, the word period and menstruation are never mentioned in the boys' classroom. I still meet high school seniors, age 17 or 18, boys who have no idea what a period is, think that it's a time in the month where girls pee out blood. <laughs> so this discovery actually started a whole new program with campaigns of care, where we're having high school volunteers go into co-ed classrooms and teach different parts of the human body, what to expect with puberty if you're a boy or a girl, trying to teach that we all want to understand the human body, no matter what, and be empathetic to different processes, even if we don't ex ourselves experience them. Now, I understand that some of you may feel a little bit uncomfortable by my coming out here and advocating for periods and saying that you should really care. Well, you should. But the reason for that is because in America, one of the most progressive countries out there, still our government is only made up of women for 20%. And if we assume that all 20% of those women are comfortable getting up and advocating for menstrual hygiene, if that 80% of men are scared to talk about periods and to allocate um, resources to maintaining menstrual hygiene for women who can't afford resources, then women and girls will continue to feel ashamed, continue to feel lesser, less capable on their periods. And women who are disadvantaged will continue to go without resources 
on their periods. And if we don't address this on a global scale, girls will continue to miss school because of their periods, which hinders our global development. This is what we need to do. Eliminate the taboo. So if you agree with what I'm saying, that when it comes to global development, the key may be women's empowerment. And the key to that may be education. We all need to make sure that if we're providing educational opportunities, investing time and resources in creating them, we want to make sure that women and girls are ready to step forth and take advantage of those opportunities. And that comes with providing them with the resources to feel confident, engaged, and ready to discover and reach their full potential. That means we all need to become advocate, uh, advocates for natural needs. So where do we start? It comes from being mindful. Earlier today, Orion talked about the importance of language. And I fully agree with that. So first off, let's eliminate the jokes about menstruating. Telling a guy that he's menstruating because he's maybe a little bit pissy that day or maybe a little bit scared to do something. We need to eliminate those derogatory comments and jokes about menstruation. Women and girls out there, stop thinking that you deserve to feel ashamed, less confident when you're on your periods. It's womanly. Every single woman experiences it on a monthly basis for 40 years of her life. And if you need to talk to someone about it and be convinced, you either call me or talk to any woman around you. And to the men out there, the dads, the brothers, the uncles, the boyfriends, be supportive, be compassionate. Understand that the women in your life might feel a little bit unstable or confused at that time and be supportive of them. I'm not saying go out to the nearest grocery store and buy them out of feminine hygiene products, although that would be a very beautiful gesture. <laughs> I'm saying create a safe space, be compassionate, make them feel that they have every reason to feel confident during that time no matter what. Don't avoid the topic. If they want to discuss their period and what they're struggling with, let them do that and be supportive. If you want to get more involved on a global scale to fight the taboos around menstruation, find organizations like Camions of Care to get engaged and provide resources to women who can't afford them to maintain their menstrual hygiene. Overall, to start, after I finish my talk, I want you all to be leaving with the idea that periods are really, really natural. They're so natural. They're they're an essential part of the reproductive cycle, the reason we're all born and here in this room today. It's natural. So start conversations, spread awareness about this. It's going unaddressed and we need to talk about it. We need to talk about it, we need to raise awareness, and we need to provide resources to women who can't afford them so girls can go to school and women and girls can stop feeling less confident or less able when they're on their periods. Thank you.